Hello, my name is Lawrence Reed. I'm the CEO at Decibel Therapeutics, and I'm very excited to join you today to talk to you about Decibel's programs, developing innovative medicines to treat the huge unmet needs of people who suffer from the afflictions of hearing loss or balance disorders. I do have to note that I may make some forward-looking statements during the course of this presentation. This is our overview of Decibel. Today, globally, there are massive unmet needs in the fields of hearing loss and balance disorders. Hundreds of millions of people literally around the globe today are afflicted by some form of these disorders. There are no approved therapies. And historically, there's been really negligible investment, both by the pharmaceutical industry and the financial community in really driving pharmaceutical innovation uh, for these disorders. Under that very broad umbrella of opportunities, at Decibel, we're particularly excited today about the field of really delivering gene therapy to the ear to address uh, these unmet needs. We believe there are many opportunities to develop innovative gene therapies uh, for the inner ear. In doing so, we really aim to deploy uh, technology and, novel, and knowledge that's been developed in gene therapy over the past uh, 10 to 20 years. But underneath that, we're really looking to bring Decibel's integrated platform to bear in which we bring together the technologies of single cell genomics to really drive a pipeline of precision gene therapies. That pipeline has two principal foci. Firstly, monogenic hearing loss, and secondly, regenerative medicines um, for regeneration of the hair cells, key sensory cells in the inner ear, both in the cochlea that are involved in detection of sound and in the vestibule where they contribute to our sense of balance. Lastly, we've assembled an outstanding team at Decibel and brought that together with a suite of really excellent investors over the past several years who've really shared our vision for building a company that can bring pharmaceutical innovation to the fields of hearing loss and balance disorders. At a high level on our team today, we really built uh, an organization at Decibel that integrates an outstanding knowledge of the inner ear, its biology, its pharmacology, and, how, and the human conditions that are associated with pathologies of the inner ear, together with individuals who have extensive experience in developing drugs in other disease areas, and others of us who've been involved in the Massachusetts ecosystem in building biotech companies uh, over the past 25 to 30 years. This is Decibel's pipeline as it stands today. I wanna to note that Decibel retains 100% of the worldwide commercial rights in this pipeline. Pipeline really categorizes three, the pipeline really comprises three categories uh, of therapeutics. At the top are our gene therapies for congenital monogenic hearing loss with our Vanguard Odoferlin program. Second category are regenerative medicines. These are gene therapies for regeneration of hair cells in the inner ear for the treatment of particularly severe balance disorders initially, and then in the longer term, the treatment of uh, people with uh, acquired hearing loss. The third category actually is a small molecule. This is a legacy program at Decibel. It's a program that's actually in the clinic today, and it's a molecule that's being developed for the prevention of the ototoxicity that's caused by, by cisplatin-based chemotherapy. We actually expect a, an interim analysis from our phase 1b study uh, during the second half of 2021, um, and at that point, we'll look to achieve um, some type of partnership or potentially a spin out of this program. I want to note that key other milestones uh, with respect to this pipeline really are associated with our gene therapies, in particular, our Odoferlin program, where we're aiming to submit an IND and or a CTA uh, in 2022. <clears throat> and then beyond that, um, our gene therapy AAV103 for uh, people suffering from hearing loss caused by GJB2 mutations, where we're looking to select a development candidate in 2022, and then our lead regenerative medicines targeting um, bilateral vestibulopathy, which is a particularly severe form of balance disorder, and our two lead programs there, um, db ato uh, which is a, a gene therapy uh, with the solo ATO1 transgene and AAV201, which integrates ATO1 and a secondary programming factor into one gene therapy. I note that our congenic, uh, congenital monogenic hearing loss programs are partnered with our colleagues at Regeneron, 
Um, it's a very interesting co-development relationship, but Decibel, as I mentioned, retains all the commercial rights uh, from that alliance. <clears throat> I mentioned up front that there are very significant unmet needs in the fields of both hearing loss and balance disorders. Literally hundreds of millions of people around the globe are afflicted with some form of this balance of these disorders. And really the important point in this slide is just to note that the fields are becoming much more nuanced now in our ability to begin to break apart these patient populations in ways that let us really think about developing targeted therapies for people in each of these categories. On the left hand side, um, we're thinking about in particular hearing loss populations where the hearing loss is caused by uh, mutations in a particular characterized gene. On the right hand side in the field of balance disorders, We've been particularly interested in a condition known as a bilateral vestibulopathy, which is a very severe form uh, of balance disorder. So our strategy on one, on one slide really aims to restore hearing and balance in patients suffering from these uh, conditions. It integrates, it uses our platform, um, which integrates single cell genomics and bioinformatics to build a pipeline of precision gene therapies, by which we really mean gene therapies is where the expression of the transgene is restricted um, to particular individual cell types in the inner ear, together with our inner ear expertise, which, as I mentioned, comprises both a, a great understanding of the biology of the ear, the pharmacology, and also how do we deliver drugs safely and effectively to the inner ear. Those capabilities come together to enable us to restore the functionality of the hair cell, these key sensory cells in the inner ear that are involved in both, in both uh, detection of sound and involved in our um, detection of our physical world and creation of the concept of balance. We're focused on both rare monogenic conditions and the much more prevalent acquired conditions. Just briefly on gene therapy in and of itself, which we believe is an incredibly powerful and promising modality for the ear, based strongly on the parallels that, we've, uh, the, that we sense uh, relative to the eye, in which so much progress has been made in recent years. The advantages of the inner ear, it's a small enclosed compartment, and thus our dose requirements, as illustrated on the right, are several orders of magnitude below those required for systemic gene therapy. Secondly, the compartment is contained such that we have minimal system systemic exposure of our drug, which we believe has a very good chance of giving us approved tolerability um, for our therapeutics. And also noting that the ear, like the eye, enjoys a significant degree of immunoprivilege. Lastly, we're accessing a single location, um, one tissue bed, um, these hair cells in either the cochlea or the vestibule, these are non-dividing cells, giving us a strong chance to approve, uh, uh, to, to achieve durable expression of our transgene. But also we access the inner ear via an established surgical approach that's used today throughout the developed world um, for cochlear implants that are embedded in the ears, uh, particularly of uh, children uh, suffering from loss of hearing early in life. Moving to our pipeline, I'm gonna review quickly our three lead programs. Firstly, DB Oto for the treatment of congenital otoferlin deficiency. Otoferlin is a calcium sensor that functions at the base of the inner hair cell. Patients born with bilialic mutations in otoferlin suffer from a congenital profound hearing loss. They're, they're picked up by newborn testing that reflexes to a genetic test for otoferlin. This is an orphan disease. We estimate there are probably a prevalent population of approximately 20,000 patients in the US and major EU markets. We believe these people all carry um, a range of otoferlin mutations that should be able to be treated with a single gene transfer. Other companies have been interested in, D in um, otoferlin deficiency, but we, leave, we believe that the decimal product, DB Oto as we call it, is very differentiated relative to the competition's products. In particular, it is a precision gene therapy in which we achieve hair cell selective expression of otoferlin. Secondly, we access the inner ear through a standard surgical procedure used today um, broadly uh, for embedding cochlear implants into the ears of infants. And thirdly, we have a very important strategic relationship with the hospital Ramani Cajal in Madrid, who we believe uh, control a registry that contains the largest characterized cohort of patients 
um, whose hearing loss is attributable to mutations in the odophyllin locus. This is a summary of the most important aspects of our preclinical recovery studies in a rodent model of odophyllin deficiency. And what we see is that when our product is introduced into these animals, we achieve um, cell selective expression of the odophyllin transgene and a very significant durable um, instatement of normal hearing uh, and hearing responses in these animals. By contrast, when we, when we deliver a, uh, a, a strongly related um, vector product, AAV vector product, but instead with our cell selective promoter replaced with a ubiquitous promoter, we see a much reduced level of durable expression uh, in these animals. This reflects um, data that's also seen in other organs and with other transgenes uh, in recent studies that really has begun to convey to us the importance of cell selective expression um, in contributing to durable recovery uh, of gene therapy rescue in preclinical studies, uh, at least in the ear and apparently in the eye as well. As we move to non-human primates and as we head towards the clinic, our proprietary promoter is demonstrated to also drive hair cell selective expression in non-human primates. On the left, you can see a marker um, that is used to confirm the expression um, of the AAV Myo15 um, promoter um, in the hair cells of the non-human primate. And on the right-hand side, we're analyzing the quantitative level of transduction that we're seeing in the inner hair cells in the non-human primate. And we're seeing transduction of between 75 and 95% of the hair cells in the inner ear of a non-human primate. That clearly is significantly in excess of a functional threshold that we've defined at around about 20% of the, uh, from our genetic models that we know that 20% is a threshold above which we see uh, complete rescue of hearing responses um, in the uh, animal ear. As we move towards the clinic, we completed a very successful uh, meeting with the FDA, a pre-IND meeting um, in the latter part of 2020, clarified the exact path that we need to take now from here uh, to achieve human dosing um, in patients um, next year in 2022. We were also able to um, uh, get good alignment with FDA in terms of the proposed phase one, two clinical trial design. And most importantly, that we're able to start our enrollment of patients in the pediatric population with good understanding and alignment around endpoints, uh, including the auditory brainstem response as a short-term weed-out of efficacy together with uh, more developmental-oriented um, facets of hearing recovery um, as the patients progress. Lastly, but by no means least, we've recently announced a strategic relationship with Cataland, uh, a leading commercial manufacturer of gene therapies who will, who will provide the material both for the preclinical and then the clinical studies um, for our program. Just quickly on our AAV103 program, this is a gene therapy that we're developing where we will achieve selective expression of the GJB2 transgene in the support cells uh, in the inner ear, and which we believe gives us a product candidate um, on which we will share data later this year. This, this candidate is aiming to complement mutations in the GJB2 locus, this is also a, uh, a condition where the patients um, who inherit mutations in the GJB2 mutation, locus, excuse me, also uh, demonstrate a congenital severe to profound hearing loss. Very significant patient population with a prevalence that's estimated um, in, the, in the Western world to be north of a quarter of a million uh, people. And um, again, a range of mutations that can be treated uh, with a single gene transfer. Our approach really leverages the decibel capability and the ability to define a promoter that will drive the expression of GJB2 selectively in the key support cells of the inner ear, not in the hair cells. And that, that, that profile has recently been demonstrated to be likely to be very important in a successful rescue of GJB2 uh, mutations uh, uh, in animals and ultimately, of course, in human beings. Our regenerative medicine programs uh, are the second part of, of our pipeline. Decibel takes a very differentiated approach to hair cell regeneration. On the left, our goal is to convert a supporting cell, these are the non-sensory support cells, um, in, the, uh, in the epithelium of the inner ear, 
and to convert them in the vestibule um, into type one or type two hair cells and in the cochlea into either outer or inner hair cells. That strategy really brings together our single cell genomics platform, our ability to identify key reprogramming factors in the inner ear and to bring those together with our ability to precisely control the uh, expression of our transgene using our proprietary promoters, um, similar to uh, what I described for the Odoferlin uh, program. So in regenerative medicines, it's really critical that you target these biologically powerful reprogramming factors to particular uh, individual cell types in the inner ear. Our lead regenerative medicine is uh, DB Atom. This is a program uh, aiming to regenerate hair cells in the vestibule. ATO1 is a transcription factor, and our candidate, uh, DB ATO, delivers ATO1 selectively um, through control with a proprietary cell selective promoter, such that we're able to um, convert supporting cells into hair cells. Um, we've observed that in a dose responsive manner in the vestibule, and we're now involved in functional studies um, to understand the degree to which those hair cells are able to contribute um, to improved um, balance health uh, in those animals. Our second generation regenerative medicine, also for the treatment of a bilateral vestibulopathy, aims to bring together 801 together with a second reprogramming factor, and that the two together will create a combination of both type two and type one hair cells from the supporting cells. And it's that combination of the two types of hair cell that we believe offers the potential um, for this product candidate um, to have superior potential efficacy. And we'll be get, gathering data on that throughout the course uh, of uh, 2021. Thirdly, I just wanna talk quickly about our odor protective therapy, DB020. This as I mentioned is a legacy small molecule program being developed for the treatment of cisplatin-based um, ototoxicity. Cisplatin remains a workhorse of modern chemotherapy. It's deployed in over a quarter of a million patients throughout the developed world. And a very significant uh, percentage of those patients who receive a high dose of cisplatin are subject to very significant impairment of their hearing, often associated with tinnitus. The goal is to deploy a validated mechanism which is a natural metabolite known as sodium thiosulfate, which has the chemical ability to inactivate cisplatin. And when we administer that locally using a proprietary formulation such that we can deliver the, uh, the drug product candidate directly into the middle ear, the small molecule then diffuses into the inner ear. Our goal is to uh, deploy that um, odor protective therapy in advance of the chemotherapy. And when we do that in animal models, we see almost complete um, protection of hearing um, prior to uh, the administration of cisplatin. The program is in clinical trials. We completed a phase one in 2019, demonstrating safety, tolerability, and a systemic exposure of the active ingredient that is well below the level at which there would be any concern about inhibiting the systemic ability of cisplatin um, to actually uh, inhibit tumor growth. We're now in a phase 1B study, a human proof of concept study, very elegant study in which patients receive drug in one ear and placebo in the other ear. Um, these are patients who, are, uh, who suffer from uh, multiple different types of tumors. Um, in addition to evaluating safety tolerability, we're also beginning to um, analyze efficacy readouts in these patients. Our goal is to have a, an interim analysis during the back half of 2021 um, that we'll be able to share uh, when that data is in hand. Wrapping up, um, Decibel, from a financial perspective, um, we recently completed our initial public offering um, in February, um, which followed on the heels of our crossover financing um, in November of 2020. And that those two financings together um, with our uh, 2020 September cash figure um, gave us a, a, a net proceeds plus the cash um, of over $200 million. The company has been supported, as I mentioned, through, by outstanding investors um, throughout the course of the company's life. The company was started by a consortium put together by Third Rock Ventures and was most recently supported by an outstanding uh, syndicate of investors uh, led by Orbimed with participation um, of all the funds uh, named here. So I'm going to wrap up there. 
Thank you very much for your interest in decibel therapeutics. I want to emphasize the um, huge number of, of opportunities that we believe there are to bring innovation to change the lives uh, of patients around the globe who are afflicted with um, any form of hearing loss or balance disorder. Thank you very much for your interest.